Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the WGLNA Season 2 Gold League. I'm your host, Christian Toma. To my left is David Williams. Make sure to check us out on Facebook and YouTube backslash WGLNA. If you guys are watching this on BattleViewer.com, go over there right now and check it out. And finally, follow us on Twitter at WGLNA so you guys can stay up to date on what's happening in the community around you and answer for us the question of the day. Which is, which tier 10 medium do you think is the best? I personally think the Object 140 is the best tier 10 medium. Uh, great DPM, really mobile, can do a lot of stuff. Talked about that. David? If I had to pick one, I'd go with the Object 140 as well. I think they're all great in their own different little roles. Sure. But for some reason, I also really like the STB. All right. Let us know, guys, what your favorite tank is. Tweet at us at WGLNA so you guys can stay up to date. And we can talk back and forth about that. But right now, match number two is going away. Eclipse versus Ping 999 on the side of Eclipse. We've got Conky on the side of Ping. We've got Shimbo. Gentlemen, welcome to the face off. And Eclipse, gonna go ahead and start with you guys. Now, on a great game on Tuesday that you guys had, a fantastic job. Congratulations on the pickup there. What do you guys think moving forward is the thing you will be focusing on as a team the most? Uh, keep communicating well and pull off our wins. Simple. That's beautiful. That's all I need. Communicate well, pull off wins, and you guys should be in first place. Best of luck as you guys attempt that as the season goes on. All right, Conky, which tier 10 medium do you think is best? I personally like the 430. That's just me. I like its DPM. I like its ability to brawl. I like how small it is, and some heavies can't aim low enough to shoot you. It's kind of fun sometimes. Con Conky, would you 1v1 <laughs> me in the 430? Yes. This is like the tier 10 1%. They're playing one of the best tanks in the game. And they're like, yeah, it's kind of fun sometimes. <laughs> like everybody else is salivating for the tank. <laughs> All nice. right, Conky. We get it. You have a lot of tier 10s. <laughs> Wave. Thank <All> right. you. <laughs> OK, Shimbo. Which tier 10 medium do you, th do you think Hello. is the best? Uh, the 62. 62A. 62A? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Would you 1v1 me, Shimbo? when you want. Okay, let's do it. Let's do that. <laughs> Hopefully we can get that on air. That'll be fantastic. Gentlemen, before we get into the match, Conky, is there anything I'd say to Shimbo before we get started? Uh, hope you have fun. I know my voice isn't as good as Star Shields, but I just found this uh, crazy good Bible story right here, if anyone would like me to read it. It's got some really, really good illustrations. Okay, and uh, Shimbo, your response. Uh, send me the book. <laughs> Love it. Love it so much, gentlemen. Best of luck to both of you. And we'll see you guys in the match shortly. You couldn't have had a better response to that one. No, I, I certainly didn't. Be it's like, <laughs> that's the best story I've ever heard. Conky, Conky. Do you have time to tell it again? Conky, when we're one v one that is when you can be also be reading me that book. That'll be my kind of handicap that you give me. Now, go ahead. now, we're starting out uh, going to the, about the second match of the night. It is going to be Eclipse versus Ping 999. Now, now, if I understand correctly, Ping has their collar back correctly. And as we can talk about this, we'll look at the rosters between both of these teams. Ping does have their collar back, right? Correct. Great. All right, now look at these rosters. So, for Eclipse, it's T1 Diabetic. Tiger loves peppers, or Tigers love pepper. And Master Pupil the, are the overall point leaders. And all of them play every match. So, they are good picks, pretty much any of them. I particularly go with T1 Diabetic just because I'm loyal like that. But Master Pupil is technically the best. Nice. For Peng, it is Mufasa, Tantanakis, and Taco Soldier. All right, Taco Soldier, again, one of those guys to look out for. Really, really, I mean, he's one of the guys that shined a lot during the uh, the qualifiers to get into this match. Again, Ping did take the qualifiers. Uh, but just on uh, Tuesday, uh, the kind of rematch of Ping versus Collar. Collar did clean through them 5-0. to zero, So it'll be interesting to see how they kind of come back as they go up against Eclipse right now, who is doing fantastic uh, so far in the season. We're seeing them adapt really well, uh, playing against on Ruinberg. I mean, this play that I loved is watching them try something, didn't work, pulled the back again, worked beautifully. Going into this one, who would you give the slight advantage to or maybe a great advantage to? I give a big advantage to Eclipse. All right. Well, let's but see. doesn't mean Pink can't show up to play today. Let's see what happens, ladies and gentlemen, as our second match of the night is going to not begin uh, <laughs> as I get super pumped because we uh, have a quick little DQ. We're going to start back over uh, and go right into the next battle. It is starting out on Pro Rovka uh, now going through. This, is, this seems to be a, a nice theme of the night. Maybe maybe, maybe every player is just talking to each other like, yeah, we'll, we'll just get into this one. Let's just all do 6v7. It'll be fine. It'll be a, a new thing. It's not definitely what's happening. Just trying to create some talking points here. Uh, now, Pro, Pro Rovka, uh, David, as we were seeing it so far, more heavily offense, more heavily defense. 
both. Okay, so pretty even on both? Yeah, I mean, both teams, basically the most common fight ends up where one team is on one side of the rail line, one team's on the other side of the rail line. Okay. And while there is technically an offense or a defense, it's usually not what decides the match. I mean, we saw Eclipse snipe one off of Simple Tankers with a cap that they probably shouldn't have been able to do. Mm. But other than that, it's mostly just a fight. Okay, so, so it just really comes down to what happened almost before that cap pressure kind of got got underway. Uh, we are just getting confirmation that Ping was the victor there starting out the night. So the first battle going over to Ping, now up 1-0 uh, against Eclipse. Uh, that was a quick. That was probably the quickest. That was probably the quickest match I've ever seen in my life. And it battle. looks to be an illegal lineup, perhaps. Hmm. Guys, no. Not really. Well, what? we're getting the word from the backstage. It was an illegal lineup. That's right. Again, uh, this, is the, this is there are you know there are certain rules that are in place, and either teams will forget these quickly, or there's a miscommunication before it starts. Either way, what happened? Ping picked up that first victory now. Uh, now, David, to your understanding, are it, whatever side that they were going to be starting on, technically they were going to be switching sides, right? Because that was considered a game. Uh, yes. So that, now that would be yes. a bummer because like, you've always planned, like, all right, guys, like, this is, we're starting out on defense. This is what we're going to plan on doing. And it's like, uh-oh, now we're immediately on offense. So we'll see if that throws. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is probably the, the most confusing thing to, to deal with in that situation. So the actual nuts and bolts of what made that lineup illegal took me a minute to notice because I was looking at and there were six tier 10 tanks and one tier eight. So there's okay. nothing particularly obvious, but Eclipse brought three oh, object 140s. You only have so two. miscommunication there. And that can happen sometimes. And it's a, it's a ritual that teams get into where the caller usually reads out the tank lineup hmm. to double verify. You could practice a hundred times and still have somebody load up the wrong tank. And I don't understand how that happens. Personally, as somebody who's been in this situation, I've, I remember yelling at somebody because they logged into the, they went into the wrong tank at the in, in some battle, and it was it was a weird thing. It was like, when did you ever play that tank? <laughs> like, not <laughs> you, you haven't even not just on this map, yeah, but ever. ever. You have never like, played why this did tank. You click and on now it? all of a sudden you think you're in it. How does that happen? I don't know. Illuminati stuff going on right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we are getting ready for our I next so. battle. Ping is up one to zero <laughs> on Eclipse. Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our tanks. For Eclipse, we have a 215, 2140s, an STB, two T22s, and an RU251. For Ping, two E5s, two STBs, uh, two T22s, and an AMX 1390. Now, that's probably the only possible win that could occur that has zero effect on our fantasy points whatsoever. Yeah, I think true. it does. Is there a winning bonus? Hypnotic, if you're out there in the viewership, please inform everybody the exact rule on that. I don't know how your system works. Anyways, we have Eclipse <laughs> headed over here to the east. They're going to pour over this, probably some on hill and some going up the 6-7, as that is the kind of the meta, but they are doing a lot on hill. I don't know what they intend to do here. They must be going up over the hill entirely, trying to sweep down the zero line to grab the entire east side. It's uh, questionable. From what I remember of this, the hill is not necessarily a safe place. But that's all fairly irrelevant, as the majority of Ping is in the west, and they're taking their time to rotate back east, as 1390 Reaper has spotted Dark God Sim and at least one other tank from Eclipse. There is an SDB for Ping all the way in the northeast, that is going to be a tricky place to deal with for Eclipse if they come pouring down into the A6 area, the six line in general, on the eastern side of the railroad, which they will very likely do here at some point. So we're going to have to see if Fluky is in a position would he be spotted or not. He's all the way over here on the island. You've probably seen this in public matches. This is usually one guy who loves to come over here. It doesn't work <laughs> so well in public matches as it does in these, Okay. in the right hands. You can see it could be virtually impossible to spot him here. Uh, Reaper taking one shot of damage. Until it's too late is what I'm getting at. So okay. he can wait here until you see all of Eclipse start lining up over here. And then if he uses this terrain well enough, and it has changed a little bit, and that tank is fairly large. But if he uses it well enough, he can cause a lot of damage and cause a lot of turret breaks or, or turn turrets hmm. for Eclipse that'll get the rest of Ping 99 a lot of angles in there to shoot. Now, the 1390 over here being spotted is actually something that's in their advantage because that gives Eclipse a reason as to why they may have been spotted from the northeast. Really? So, that, so think about this. If they see the 1390 drive over west, and as they're starting to, to file in there, they get spotted by something, they can 
logic out that somebody's in the northeast. Huh, sure. But sure. as long as the 1390's there and they know it's there, they're thinking they're only being spotted by that. So until Fluky decides to show his hand, Eclipse thinks that it's a smaller problem than it really is. Well, let's see if that problem turns out to be a disaster here as Rome applies some cap pressure, taking the first chunk of damage. A Reaper getting dropped extremely low himself. Dark on Zim now finally taking some flak in that RU25 on Reaper. One more shot, and he might be going down there. And that 1390 draw cap going to pick that one up in his 140. And that is the first tank there falling for the side of Pink 999 as Eclipse continues to push their front. Rome is in a little bit of a danger here. Looks like Fluky is going to pick him up from the top of the hill, but now he is spotted. So let's see, knowing that information, will Eclipse be able to respond accordingly, or can Pink get the leg up on a master pupil taken? 429 points of damage there in that 5B. As you guys see there on your screen, Fluky still up on top. He looks relatively safe here. It looks like yeah. Eclipse. You can see the curve of the hills. It's yeah. very tricky through all this foliage. I apologize. But you can see the curve of the hill protects him quite wow. well, well, even though he is spotted. He is mostly hulled down over here. There are little points which he can uh, be shot at. Now, the big problem with this is if he doesn't get enough damage out and Eclipse is able to kind of dance away, they can pour everybody into the western side, it and it's an imbalanced fight, right. as there's now a tier 8 down and a tier 10 out of the way. However, Eclipse has already lost Rome in a T22, so this is already starting to file into a Ping 99's hands with Sheep, getting lit up there quite a bit. He's now down to 513, so he's roughly two shot to anybody here. And it looks like Eclipse is going to take the perhaps heavy-handed route and just take three tanks and go right at him and dig him out. Because if they can take that territory away, it will then turn into their territory, their advantage, their position that Ping 999 has to deal with. Hmm. If they can get up there and take out Fluky quickly, or even at all, then they are in business, but it looks like they are struggling to figure out exactly how they want to deal with this. Looks like they're going to send Conky up kind of by himself here to, to deal with it, try to dig him out there in that T22. I know Davis think a T22 against an STB1 uh, and a head-to-head -head fight. Who has the advantage? Well, that's a difficult decision. It even. should be the T22, I believe, but I haven't played one, so I don't have that hands-on experience I need to say definitively, definitively which sure. one I think is sure. better. I would say it largely probably has more to do with who gets the most backup from their team and who gets the first shot. All right, well, we'll see. Will it be Ping who gets the backup for Fluky or will it be Eclipse to get the backup for Conky here? Three minutes and 10 seconds, though, is on the clock. If Eclipse is going to do something, they got to do it quickly. Time is not on their side as they are the attackers. They need to be the one to either clear out all enemy tanks before the time runs out or successfully cap one of the two bases. It looks like they are all going for that eastern base. No one heading to that uh, number one, the northern Cap, you guys see on the mini-map. Two minutes and 50 seconds now going by. Clips really kind of setting up. I'm not sure what they're doing. They're sitting there, Object 140 and the uh, RU251 in the back here. Possibly going to the railroad lines to try to get some damage there on the ping when they pop out. Not sure what they're waiting for. It'll be interesting to see uh, who kind of pulls the trigger first. Obviously, it's going to be Eclipse because ping just needs to sit back and kill as much time as possible. Yeah, it looks like Eclipse has been rather stumped by this whole thing. And they're going to send an Object 140 and an RU-251 all the way around. And that is Tigers and Dark God Sim together. Two people who I know are capable of calling. I don't have a solid answer on exactly who does that the most on this team. Actually, there is something worth noting here. Conky is in, and I thought that he said that he was benched. Oh. All right. Are they missing somebody today? We will have to get to the bottom of that. Dark God, Zim, and Tiger starting to run down the western side, but with only one minute and 50 seconds roughly left on cap, Ooh. or left on, uh, on the clock, I do not think there are enough to really get this done. They got to do something. It needs to be now. And with Master People taking the first shot damage there between Shimbo, Sheep, and himself. Shimbo does take a little in return, but not much. And that looks like that was a trigger to pull the Conky. Aggressively pushing there up on top against Fluky along with T1 Diabetic and Drop Cap, but they're still just kind of sitting, waiting for something. A minute and 20 seconds on the clock. Tigers, Dark God Zim now starting to spread out, maybe getting to their positions. I don't know if they're going for a very large flank on top the center. Damage there for Tigers. They're 590 going to be connecting onto him. And here comes the, the fight in the top. They're trying, they're finally deciding to get Fluky out of there. Three members of Eclipse against just Ping Mufasa and Aldo are there to back him up. Fluki just has to run to safety. Will he get there in time or will he be going down? One more shot and he's going to be falling in. That STV1 is going to be taken out. But once he goes down, there might be just 60 seconds, ladies and gentlemen, left on the cap. Fluki is still alive. Finally, Kongi takes him out. 
But uh, T1 Diabetic, Drakai, and Conky all took a lot of damage for that. Meanwhile, Shimbo taking some as well against Master People, who's going into 2v1, getting the ready for the backup from Tigers and Dark Gods. They're going to try and take down all these fronts, all the tanks at the same time. Shimbo taking down Master People is not the way that they would like it to go. Ping 999 just needs to hold on for 30 more seconds here. Mufasa, one more shot away from going down. Dark Gods going head to head against Sheep, all coming to back him up there. Conky does. Finally pick up another tank, and that is going to be four members remaining for ping against the four now for Eclipse. Shimbo finds Tigers, and that should be it. These two tanks from ping could be, or should be able to run away from Drock in the 13 seconds now. That remains on the clock. Kaki going head-to-head -head now against Ald. T1 Diabetic has to be careful. Ald could finish him off there with one shot. Ald taking 746. Five seconds on the clock. It is not enough time for Drock to finish off both of these tanks. Now down to one and zero, and that is going to be, ladies and gentlemen, ping picking up their second victory of the night here on our second match. Now, uh, David, is that one of those things that we talked about where it's just the position that Eclipse got into was one of those positions that you just like you just don't want to be? Uh, either they were stumped for too long from what uh, Ping was doing, or just was it their initial starting you know, zones putting a lot of people on the hill? just something that you wouldn't recommend on this map. A bit of both. Okay. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge fan of that many tanks on the hill, but the biggest problem was how long they took to make any sort of decision regarding that STB. And once they made one, it was right. Tigers had to overplay his position. Uh, we saw him there trying to take down two E5s, and he lost that. But he was only trying to go that hard that fast because of the amount of time left on the clock. Sure. Overall, they, even still, there were enough tanks left to win that fight for Eclipse. They just make those decisions faster gotcha. and communicated them more clearly, which I believe is probably the... the position that they were in, okay. then they would have won that match. But uh, things like that can throw you for a loop, especially when you've committed enough tanks to where you feel uncomfortable pulling tanks back out because mm. they're going to take more damage. And that always seems like more damage in your head than it actually will be Bad. because you, you're, it's like, you're like Gollum with HPs there. You're like, my precious, I'm not <laughs> going to let, let any go. of them go. Yeah. Sure. So uh, let's go to stats where we can discuss the actual numbers. All right. And perhaps we can talk about it. Exactly what was going wrong with them. Conky with nearly 3,000 for his team. And a T22, uh, 2,200 out of both Master People and T1 Diabetic. And then over here for Ping, it is Fluky and Sheep, both over 2,000. Tontinakis just below 2,000. And Shimbo at 1,700. Good much damage. I think that what's happening there is, while at least somebody probably had a solution to what was going on, it may have taken him a little bit of time to think of it. Hmm. Then he's got to think about how he's going to get his tanks out of the place that they were in in order to put them where he wants them to be. So gotcha. that's a whole different problem. So he's actually solving more five and or six more problems. And, more time. and having to communicate all of this to the team sure. in a certain amount of time, and you just lose tons of time there. But we can talk about that a little bit more after we talk about the tanks. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Our next battle is underway. Ping is up 2-0 to zero against Eclipse. Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our tanks. For Eclipse, we have an IS-7, a Batchat, two 140s, two STBs, and an RU-251. For Ping, an IS-7, an E5, two 907s, two T-22s, and an RU-251. So what I'm saying uh, is just that anytime you have to relay and, and communicate all those kinds of things, people ask their clarifying questions or, or they don't understand how it will work, or in rare cases, or hopefully rare cases, you get that person on your team that just starts arguing and telling you it can't be done. Mm. Uh, and then usually the caller just kind of has to yell at him. He's like, I don't care. Die trying. Right. Um, right. Right. I'm the final decision. Yeah. So exactly. So uh, you just bleed tons of time during that kind of process. So that's one of those matches that Eclipse is going to have to come back and look at very closely and they're going to be upset about it because they had that match and uh, so far they certainly have a lot of material that could put a team on tilt they have one disqualification and one game that they very easily could have won in blue so this is a, this kind of situation where teams can start in fighting where they start losing faith in one another and that's just as bad you don't have to be yelling at each other just for things to start going on tilt Exactly. You don't trust your teammate to block for you. You don't trust your player to do something well enough. So then you send two instead of one. Mm. Things like this start really ruining teams and strategies. And it's just an uncomfortable place to be in. And eventually, as with uh, you know pretty much any any kind of team-based thing, eventually you just have to have faith, even if all evidence suggests the contrary, because you are in the situation you're in, and it does no good to doubt people you're working with. Sure. Again, guys, this is coming from a man who has been in this situation, who has done this tons, time and time over again. So if anyone has something to say about it, listen to David. Listen to his voice. It's hard, though. 
And, and it gets especially hard for older teams. With newer teams, somebody fails, and it's like, okay, everybody makes mistakes. Okay. With older teams, they can be one of the best players in your team, but they consistently make a certain kind of mistake. And it gets very difficult to forgive it or forget it. And you're mm. just like, man, he just never gets this right. Mm. But the grass is not always greener elsewhere. All right. And that's, and that's, what, uh, that's what roster changes are for. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like I said, the grass is not always greener. You can you can recruit recruit somebody else, and they're like, they never make that mistake. But, but there's something make, else they do. They make four other ones <laughs> right. in different places, sure. and it, it's just a never ending thing. Sure. Take that team cohesion, and take just that that well oiled machine that you really see kind of these top tier players that's, make. That's why Jay Smooth subscribes to the philosophy that just stays the course with the people he has right. because the right. relationships he has and their, and their kind of working, important. working dynamics are more important. That experience is more important to him than anything else. Everything else can be taught. Sure. There Some people, go. exact opposite. You have, you have natural talent at the game. We'll work on how to talk to each other. <laughs> different, different philosophies. And all of them are right and all of them are wrong. It just totally depends on the day and who you're playing against. All right, well, right now, let's see if it's Eclipse who can come back from possibly, like you were saying, David, uh, you know, being so many things, factors that could lead to tilt, uh, or if they'll be able to carry themselves together and possibly maybe tie up uh, against Ping here. Putting some cap pressure on is Reaper there for Ping 999 in that 251. Uh, Eclipse now spread out all over uh, near, near the railroad. The only one kind of the center is Drock, and then I7, who is spotted there, running up, taking a shot there, bouncing it uh, from Tot and Shimbo. Over on the side there. This spot Look will at be that. difficult that to see. Sure. It's a little bit of an angle, potentially, on how the bush is modeled. Now, the visual model of a bush is not necessarily the exact same as the camouflage model. Typically, in game engines, things are usually a little bit more square than they look. So there's a possibility that Reaper here could be spotted from certain angles, where there's a possibility that even though it doesn't look like that, foliage completely covers him. It does. It does. Gotcha. All right, good thing to keep in mind is he is still not spotted. And with Sheep joining him, he is spotted, though. If he goes up to his teammate, he might be giving away. No, he's was smartly going right in the front there. Drock bouncing shots left and right. 16 seconds on the cap. Finally, some connecting for 758, getting tracked. A quick repair as he heads on the way back. 10 seconds on the clock. This bat chat now coming around for Eclipse. It's going to be on Tigers to go through. He is getting lit up right now, and he still hasn't even spot Reapers yet. 13, 16, 1800 points of damage, and with the clock now, down to zero. Ping 999 is going to pick up their third victory here against Eclipse. Making it 3-0 against the defending team right there. Ping with that, either utilizing that spot well, just catching Eclipse off guard. That, is that one of the situations? I mean, obviously that bad chat went flying in there because he had to. It was like he, he needs to get the reset. He needs to find anyone so his teammates can shoot. Is that enough to just put it all on one teammate and hope that you find him? Or were they just not expecting that their one member of Eclipse or, uh, for Ping to be uh, hid so well? There was a lot wrong with what Eclipse was doing mm. there. Let's quickly look at stats, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Can't wait. There you have it. Draw cap did damage. No one else did. <laughs> oh. Yeah. All right. Okay. They just they're, they had nothing going for them. No motion. They were just trying to block one cap. They didn't give it enough uh, consideration as they needed to. And there were a couple different things that they could do to guarantee that that would never happen to them. They weren't really taking advantage of any one of them. So, meanwhile, Ping had created a firing line in the east and was baiting Drock to come over and try and peek for a shot and getting everything they needed out of that every single time. Yeah. So the tier is a couple different things. Uh, and this, this, I believe, is tough. Sure. I was just about to say, like, this is, and if not, things, then this is even more tilt. Too many things not done, too many decisions not made. That should have For been it made. to be anything other than, than in a sense, uh, a certain amount of panic and distrust and, and the, all these things that make up tilt. I Hashtag mean, tilt, tilt is, is real. Tilt is its own word, right? But tilt is essentially a lot of panic and anxiety and, and fear of what's coming, the, the, the potential of embarrassment later down the road. And it's always harder against teams that you feel that you are better than, mm. or teams that you, you know, in this, in this situation, it just could be Eclipse's first hard loss. So the first time that they're really starting to feel what it's like when things go wrong. Gotcha. And this, it's gotcha. going to be a big thing for them to try and turn this back around. They could be able to do it at a map change, but it'd be huge if they won this one and then the map changed. That's mm. when they can take that breather yeah, cool, we did it. and sort it out. When do you take a timeout if, you, if you're you know, Eclipse? Would you take it now? Guys, wait, hold like whoa, 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 something's going on. We just now went down three. We should have picked that up. What's happening? Is, that a, is this a good time or do you just wait, try to do one more? 
<laughs> but if you go this, to if this you is a good four time. zero, well, they didn't this take the good time. they didn't take the timeout, ladies and gentlemen, because we are now in to our fourth battle of our second match of the night. Eclipse down zero to three against Ping. Can they pick up one victory, or will Ping be able to make it a four zero? Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our tanks. For Eclipse, two two one fives and object one forty, and STB two T twenty twos and RU two fifty one. For Peng, two E5s, Bat Shad, an Object 907, two STBs, and an AMX 1390. I will say, because we're focusing a lot on Eclipse right now, mm. that Peng is playing better than they have so far in the regular league, more like they had in the qualifiers, and some little little uh, details about their strategy are quite nice. Sure. Now, back to uh, kind of what went wrong with Eclipse. They could have done a lot of what they did last time, rotate through the south and the western side in order to grab more map control as most of Ping advise themselves into kind of the west and northwest areas. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, they just needed to send somebody down, and I can probably get a... Uh, right after this 1390 and RU-251 very likely spot each other, I can take our camera and fly it down that side. Dark God's name and Reaper. These two. One of them will see the other very soon here. Oh, there it is. There Reaper getting spotted up. And Zim. Pro skills, Zim, immediately using the bushes in his favor to get away without Reaper ever spotting him. Mm. That's that's huge for mm. Eclipse. Now, this ridge right here is the one that the I-7 was on, Drock, right? And the RU-251 was right in that in that uh, that bush? Yep. That's within proxy range. Step one to any sort of hill fight along that. Huh. If you get somebody in there and you just what I call surf for that, and you find out who's on the other side through proxy, you never would have even needed to spot gotcha, the RU-251. Gotcha, gotcha. And Makes really, uh, I think a couple different things can happen there. A caller can ask somebody in draw cab's position, do you have it? And he says yes, because he saw another tank on cap. Oh, God, that was that. Oh, gotcha. And even then, he still didn't get it. Uh, or there could have been no calls. It's a lot of different things. I'm not going to speculate too much further. But it forced Tigers to have to come in in a very uncomfortable situation in a tank with virtually no armor and try and make the save the day when it was very unlikely he was going to it. Even if he did get the reset at the cost of a bad shadow, no, it probably not would not have uh, worked out. All right. And that is what now has led to Ping being up 3-0. to zero. Uh, One of the things to say that has led uh, Ping being up to 3-0 to zero against the Eclipse here. Master people there being spot out by Shimbo. Now, David, as, you know, a little a few of these shots are being exchanged here, back and forth here. Drock taking a little bit in that 5B. It, this, this, this fight, the, the format of this map so far that I've been noticing, is it's so much are on the center railroad, right? It's do you, you know, who's on what side? Do they push over it? Which side are all your tanks on? And then if they, if the enemy goes to their side, you got to cross the railroad, and it's the, you know, the defending enemy's or team's job to stop them from crossing over and getting free damage. Why don't you, as the defenders, just simply put half of your forces essentially on one side, half on the other, and then just deal with it, you know, based on that? Why, why do we see teams put, you know, one of the, you know, one of the east or one of the west? Why do they split it in half like that? Because the enemy team will probably take their entire team, pick one of your halves, and dump on it. Okay. And so then you'll it, just it, lose them all very quickly. You can't. There's no quick enough response. There are strategies of the past that have some elements of that, but it's usually backed up with at least one tank uh, on the rail itself, very far back, so he can swing and fire both ways. Gotcha. So you have to make it so that it, they can't just simply put seven tanks on your separated unit. And that's on all maps. You can't just separate without a lot of force behind something back. Gotcha. Well, it looks like Eclipse decided to forget what they were doing over there in the northwest and start, or northeast, start heading to the west here, uh, bringing all their tanks back down south to their spawn. Just 140, though, for Eclipse is being spotted out. That is Tigers, who's driving that one. And driving kind of straight across here. And it looks like, uh, from this information so far, possibly Ping does have a, an idea now what Eclipse is doing. Interesting to see how Eclipse either responds to this or how Ping can uh, shut down what Eclipse is trying here. T22 now running. Looks like the 1390 is going to be a bit of a trouble here. Reaper getting kind of caught out. He might be being surrounded here. He's going to have to use, I'm not sure if there's a hill there or not for him to be safe by. Tigers running up on the way through. He is now no longer spotted, but he might be just for a second there. Tigers are being spotted out. Taking some shots there from Mufasa and Sheep. Reaper's making it out safely. I should say safely as he gets shot in the back for 310 points of damage there. 39 trying to uh, throw down some covering fire. It was all in that batch at 317. One more, and he's going to be going down. Looks like Reaper might not be able to make it out safely. Only time will tell, but there's three minutes and 53 seconds on the clock, and Ping has been able to burn half of the time so far against Eclipse. It just seems as if the, you know, they were just a little unsure of the initial strategy starting out here. Tigers now taking some damage there. 375 taunt now. Looks like they might be getting themselves into a bit of a corner. 
I'm guessing they're just waiting on Drock and Master People to come be able to try to respond back. Shimbo taking a 700 points of damage. A lot there going through. Beautiful focus fire for Eclipse there onto that E5. He is barely holding on with just 61 points of HP, but he is alive. So Konki's being set up just to try to either get a final shot on there or what. Shimbo backing up. The Reaper still alive, running on the way through. 423 points of damage are going to Sheep. A firefight going on over this valley, a very long distance back and forth, but it seems so far Eclipse is in the lead, technically, as far as HP goes. About 1,500 points, three minutes, though, on the clock. Again, getting down to a point where Eclipse needs to do something quickly. They cannot let themselves uh, go too much longer, or Ping will be able to take this match. And it looks like this is the trigger that is being pulled. They're trying to find uh, surround Mufasa Taunt and Shimbo Dry now coming in. Flugi taking shots onto him, and the battle has begun. Who comes out on top of this will decide the victor of this map. Master People finds the first tank, and that is Shimbo finally falling down. Mufasa, though, taking down Tigers. Taunt being surrounded there by all members of Eclipse. Rome finding that one, but Mufasa does find Drug as he is now back. He has 1,100 points of damage there into that object. 907, all doing his best running in, but is not going to make it in time to save Mufasa. Dark God Zim picking that one up in the RE251. Five tanks for Eclipse against the four for Ping 999. And now Eclipse looks like they're in a better position. The best one they've been in so far in this second match of the night. Two minutes, 12 seconds on the clock. And Ping, seems like they're just going to be trying running, but they have to get over a railroad track to get to safety here. And that is a dangerous road to drive. Indeed, Sheep very low in that STB1, trying to find a little bit of cover here on the rock. T1 Diabek now pushing forward. He knows that if he stays, he will be going down. 261 there going through. Dark God Sims shot is up. He's going to try to use any of these hills to his advantage. Although, in this bad chat, almost on reload, he is going to be uh, probably a pretty huge member here as the fight continues. Rome going head-to-head -head on him. Sheep, one more shot. He's going down. Conky there going for the ram. Gets the ram damage there. Almost goes down himself, but not quite enough. Meanwhile, Reaper has been sent way back there in the A0 position that we saw Fluky go last time. And he's going to be there just to uh, try to buy some time if it does go to time, because it seems like Ping knows that, that is the only hope that they have all there being surrounded here. Fluky going to be counted out by T1 Diabetic. The first shot goes through, but it doesn't matter. T1 Diabetic takes down Fluky. All oh, finds Dark God Sim. He might be able to stall this game out long enough. His shot's just going into Master People. It is going to be up to it looks like Reaper to come down off of that hill to get the resets. 40 seven seconds now on the clock once Conky joins that is definitely uh, definitely going to be enough time there to get it and it looks like Reaper either doesn't know this or just hopes that he can get some shots there I mean they are all spotted because they are all on cap and now there it goes 20 seconds on the clock looks like finally they know that 1390 is the only hope that they have to go through but he's going to have to make an amazing play he only has 13 seconds to get there David and it looks like he's not oh I mean he might get there eight seconds on the clock Running over, down to five. He is now about to cross the railroad tracks. He needs to let his first shot there go onto Conky, but a lot of the damage is onto Rome. Down to one second. The grace period looks like it's not going to be enough. Reaper comes over the side. Eclipse, though, finally being on the cap on out, getting their first victory of the night against Ping, making it now one to three. And David, this is the uh, this is kind of the victory that we talked about that they, that they possibly needed to kind of be able to take a breath, go, all right, guys. We're kind of gathering ourselves. Maybe now you take the time out. I mean, all right, we're going to a new map. Let's let's pretend like none of that ever happened. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and we already saw 07 pull themselves out of this. So it is possible. True. True. However, Ping is playing a lot better really good. than they played so far. Let's go ahead and take a look at stats. We'll show you exactly what we're talking about. Master Pupil. You may have made a solid case for me to cheat on T1 Diabetic with you in future lineups <laughs> because 4,400 damage hear that. is not small. Roma, 2,800. Draw cap, nearly 2,000. Conky, 1,600. T1 himself, 1,500. And Dark Odds, and Tigers, strangely lower than usual. Fluky with 3,000 for Ping. Sheep with 2,000. Aldebaran with 2,000. You could see the rest of that list and Reaper right there. Mm. Mostly just out of the fight. Yeah, yeah. So you, you be, being used to scout, being used to try to make sure they could find any member of Eclipse as possible. If if they would have pulled him off of that hill quicker and he was able to get you know to the cap, do you think that there was a chance that he could have got those reset points or was he just too low and too loud of a tank? I mean, obviously it, anything can happen, but you know, nine times out of ten. Yeah, if you're asking me very, very specifically, is there a chance? Yeah, sure. Yeah, right. There's a chance. I mean, he actually, he actually pulled up right as the match was ending. He pulled up right on that, on that, uh, that berm, right, and took a shot, and it actually hit and penetrated for 239 damage. And oh. I, was, I, just, 
That's, oh. I chuckled right then and there. I was like, it wouldn't, have saved, it wouldn't have saved the match. But if he could nail several of those, then yeah, sure. But realistically, no, that okay. match is over. Gotcha. So Eclipse is doing a fantastic job kind of controlling it's that now. And one thing they did do was... Difficult fight. Was going over, yeah. I mean, they were really focusing toward the north. Decided to, to say no to that. Bring all their guys to the south, which you killed a lot of time. But luckily, they were, in the end, able to pull that one out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, going on to Himmelsdorf. Ping is up 3-1 to one against Eclipse. Can they continue and just pick up two more victories and end the night? Or can Eclipse come back? Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our tanks. Eclipse with a 113, a 50B, an E100, two 215s, an IS-7, and an RU-251. Hmm. For Ping, two 215s, an IS-7, an Object 260, an E5, an STI, and an E50. Interesting lineups we have here. This Eclipse will begin on offense, which is not where yeah. you want to yeah. be here. However, 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 there is a chance, uh, you know, I, I, that you could call offensive side favored on Himmelsdorf. Okay. I still think it's favored to defense, but that's only after you kind of compute all the metagames. But because these two teams are new, Hmm. There is a okay. chance that it is offensively biased in this specific case. Okay. Well, let's hope uh, for Eclipse to think that that is the case. Obviously, they do not want to let Ping have one more because just one victory away, which is not a, a, you know, to losing. I guess one loss away to losing is not a good place. Want to be Reaper. And that I-7 getting into that very classic G3 position, uh, doing his best to be kind of hauled down here. We talked about how this isn't, isn't is it, did we say it was as successful as when the IS-3s got here, or is not as successful? More successful. More successful. More successful. Gotcha. So even more successful than, harder to than dig last that out season than an IS-3. Conky taking sure. some shots there. A lot of members of Eclipse are going on top of the hill. <laughs> Shot bit. him with HE. Oh, <laughs> so a little, little bit of damage there going to Conky, but not too much. And nope. I was kind of expecting maybe some gun damage, which would be a really, really trolly way to play this in, from Reaper shoes. Okay. So if you brought brought enough HE to damage the gun permanently of the guy trying to shoot at you so that he was more inaccurate, it'd be hilarious. It'd be kind Whoa. of a waste of time, but still hilarious. Rome looked like from on top of the hill with E100, he took his HE shot at Reaper, did about 100, and Reaper's still firing at Conky. Little 27 <laughs> shots at a time. Slivering him down. Everybody's basically looking for kind of HE penetration on a, on a hatch or a roof. And 193 from Rome on top of the hill on a Reaper there is not small. I mean, give him enough time and he can start whittling things down. But for how long it would take an E100 to fire that many shots, uh, kind of a waste. However, Reaper does have a dead gunner. And 249 coming out of that shot. Ooh. Maybe it's not as much of a waste as I was, as previously saying. And we could check out Rome. What he's bringing. Top of the hill. Okay, yeah, he is bringing the, the uh, 15. The 150. Here. I was kind Ooh. of hoping. 250. I was kind of hoping he was doing this with the 128, which would be kind of hilarious on its own because it would be a, a fa firing much faster. But it didn't look like he was firing fast enough for that to be the 128. But he's, he's definitely doing enough. Yeah. And Reaper, if he can get this done a little bit faster. 418! That certainly mattered. And there are a number more tanks. The fv 215 bs are actually uh, contributing with that damage as well from a different spot just to the left of Rome. Wow. Over here, they were firing from this gap all the way down on Reaper. You can see him way at the end there. And they Just were taking those barely shots. Barely popping up. Either way, that HE is certainly working out. And with E100 alone, probably not fast enough unless they get one of those nice shots, that 400 shot. Again. Ooh, again. Two, 253. Not bad. At the current pace that they're at, I would say it is well within acceptable amount of time. All right, here. Now, if you're, if you're ping, if you're a Reaper right now, and you're taking so much damage, why not leave? Oh, he can't. If he tries to go anywhere, oh, is he's he going to die. Really? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So, so as Ping, what do you respond to this? You're, you're, right, we're out of losing I-7. Yeah. Ideally, you have to have some sort of counter move planned in the event that something like this happens. Oh, Reaper. Oh, I thought I was leaving for a second. Nope. Just trying to juke out. Dark on Zimbo. Taking a good chunk of damage. Then RU-251. Another 225 goes on that I-7. One or two more shots. If, if uh, that E100 can get the uh, the 400 shot again, Reaper is going down. It looks like this is his call to kind of run away. Uh, he is still spotted. He's trying to end the not buy his time. Four minutes and 10 seconds on the clock here. Eclipse has done a great job whittling down uh, Reaper. And if they can just finish him off, they're going to be a tank up. As long as Dark Guns can stay alive, they then RU251. are getting very close. There we go. Woo!
here we go. I was going to say, they're getting, they're getting very close to spending too much time on one person. Four minutes, if you think about it, for one guy is acceptable, provided they can get something moving very soon here, because there are still a lot of hit points left out there for Ping. Nearly 13 thousand hit points mm. left for Eclipse to dig sure, through. Sure. And that just that takes time. Sure. And we'll see if that is uh if, if three minutes and thirty seconds is the amount of time Eclipse can do it. Because if not, Ping is gonna pick up another victory here on defense. Eclipse now uh, going uh, biasing themselves toward the north. They're not they're ignoring that uh, western camp, sending all their members here. I just leave that fifty B now in the back who should be joining them very relatively soon. And the courtyard here and oh taking down Dark God Zam that RU two by one fall in the moment he gets spotted. Rome taking a shot there, uh, going into it. Looks like the object 260 for ping. Nothing, uh, no damage going through. All now in a lot of oh, trouble wow. here. 883 points of damage here. Once Draw comes up, they should be able to shut down this ST1. There is nowhere that he can go. Drock picking him up almost for free there. Not a lot of response coming out there for ping. Letting that, uh, that tank fall here. And now it is five on the side of ping to six on the side of Eclipse. The uh, tank advantage. Ping is now lost. Uh, they are now down two tanks. Again, still 11,000 points of HP. Two minutes and 30 seconds on the clock here. It's going to be up to Eclipse to make something happen. Master people getting shot from behind here. 362 damage there in that 5B. Kaki now chasing down Fluki and Mufasa, who is going through. And Ping deciding to uh, just ignore anything that's happening on the cap here as Roman T1 Diabetic are going to get off cap themselves to try to help with the fight here. Master people taking down Fluki there. Another tank falling for Eclipse. Tonk! Finding Master Pupil there. It is a one for one exchange in favor, really, of no one. Tigers for Eclipse picking up Sheep. The E5 now falling. Two minutes and 10 seconds on the clock with just three tanks remaining. It looks like Eclipse should be able to pick up this victory here. Shimbo taking a good chunk of damage, not doing too much there into Drak. Mufasa will be going down there to Konki, leaving just Tot there in that object 260, surrounded by four members. Drak is being the one to send to make sure Shimbo cannot go anywhere. A minute and 50 seconds will be plenty of time for Eclipse to pick up the remaining tanks. Shimbo falls, Tot going down. Wow, 25 health there. There it is, finishing off there. And Eclipse picking up a second victory now. On to ping 999. David, there you're talking about you know, the, the idea that in this situation right now, defense, you know, it, not necessarily having the upper hand. Ping do a fantastic job on offense, picking that one up. Now, talking again about that IS-7, spending too much time there. Uh, they. Yeah, they did it waste, you know, not waste, I guess, but they did spend half the map to take down that tank. They continued to push on forward, all sitting on that northern cap for ping, kind of be taken out for free. What was, was he just sitting there to make sure that trying to, was he trying to trap anyone for, you know, for the enemy coming around the side? Was he there for scouting? You're talking about Aldebaran and the SCI. Um, yeah. The he northern. was there to guarantee that the cap couldn't be capped. Okay. And he did kill. Dark God Sims RU251 as he was trying to get in there. However, I believe that Eclipse had a better answer to that general spot. And I have to study the armor configurations in the exact spot pretty closely. I'm assuming they have here. Okay. And it could be a, an interesting pick that kind of changes meta if my suspicions prove correct. Ooh. Let's go to statistics and we can talk about it there. Let's do it. So, Rome. 13 shots, 12 hits, 11 penetrations, mostly HE for 4,000 damage. Woo. Uh, and you can see there, damage from... So he did what I would say, that's probably a fairly reliable number, 1878. That's great. Pretty far away. So uh, then there's T1 Diabetic with 3,900. His were much closer. Draw cab, and you can see as it go down the list, nobody breaking 2,000 for paying as they mostly got snuffed out of that. Now T1 Diabetic's 113 was on the corner in the northern cap. The two, the yes, the northern cap, where the STI was, where Aldebaran was. And head-to-head, -head, T1 Diabetic had no problem penetrating Aldebaran's uh, front, which is not an easy tank to penetrate. Okay. So perhaps the 113 is a good round for that particular spot huh. on the tanks he's going to face. Then T1 Diabetic angled himself in a particular way that makes the 113 very tricky to penetrate. Mm. So it could be a, a great tank for that spot. A little bit of new meta maybe coming needs out. Needs more review. Well, let's see but if it looked like it worked. Well, let's see if we continue on to the next battles. We will see Eclipse again on offense if they do that again. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, Eclipse is on defense. We're switching sides. Pink still up three to two. Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our tanks. For Eclipse, we have a 50B, two 215s, two IS-7s, a W100, and an RU-251. For Ping, and a 50B, two 215s, two IS-4s, an IS-7, and an AMX 1390. Ping now on offense, looking to extend their lead and prevent Eclipse from tying it up. Eclipse only has to defend this round, and all of their previous sins will be forgiven. <laughs> a 
according to David. Not for God. For David. For the world of tanks. By the game. Yeah, for the, for the is, world of tanks is an game objective engine. thing, all right? This isn't yeah. just me. Yeah. All right, so right now, Dark God Zim has a decent chance to intercept Raper. Uh, if he wants to, I wouldn't, as that 1390 would probably win. Although he does have some backup. Zim hanging around a lot longer than I'm comfortable with. Oh, and there goes your one bit of cover. But he escapes anyways. And nobody really paying too badly for that. Zim trying to get a little bit more damage wow. on Reaper as Reaper gets away. Zim will probably get in one shot right here. One, two, and three. He didn't no. see it. Didn't take it. Interesting. His angle, it, when he's rocking back and forth there, he decreased his angle to such a point where by the time Reaper was spotted, he's pretty much through the gap. So, Zim's movement there, kind of locking out that shot on himself. No big deal on either side of the fence, honestly. Unless one of those uh, scouts goes down, it's not a big cause for concern. Now, Eclipse doing the same move that they just caught Ping doing. However, Ping does not have an E100. Mm. So, Ping cannot lob those very, very dangerous HE shells into this area. And if they want to attempt to do the same thing, it'll probably take them a lot longer. Yeah. If it's even possible. <laughs> it's like those first two shots bounced. If the 50B can get some penetrations from up there, it'll mm. be a big deal. But trying to shoot HE onto an IS-7 with the two guns that they have up there is not Tough. an advisable thing. All right. Now, uh, one thing also, Eclipse bringing that E-100. Um, something on defense. We usually see on, on uh, defense head up to the hill to kind of go for that northern cap to kind of block that. This time he's actually over on the west side. Is this is this a good position for him to be in? Is that Waffle in, in trouble if he tries to, you know, if a ping does push to the north and he has to rotate, is he more easily caught out? Or is he going to be, you know, kind of always paired up with another tank to defend him? Uh, he usually be paired up with another tank to defend him. You are speaking of uh, the 50B, yes? Uh, the Waffle, the 100 for oh, sorry. Eclipse. sorry. Apologies. Um... He doesn't have to have defense. Okay. He doesn't have to. But they will very likely put him someplace where he's kind of a backstop on a line where there are tanks nearby anyways. They will always have somebody screening it out so that the scout can't get to him, but not necessarily there to hold his hand all the time. Gotcha. All right, here, a little bit of uh, a little bit of damage there going off. Dark him again, uh, getting some shots there. This time looked like possibly into Reaper. And that 1390, another 452 points of damage there coming out from that 50B for Eclipse. Again, right into Reaper's face there. In his 1390, he is now having to back off. Rumors are spotted in pink. Very interesting position. We don't really see a lot of uh, teams take this route on offense. Sitting here all over to the west here. He's trying to go for maybe a railroad fight. Maybe going over for this western cap, try to pull uh, any members of Eclipse from the north. But Eclipse looks like they're, they're really ready and set up for this. Is this a response to, to Conky and his IS-7? Is this a good, you know, kind of a good place to go? Or is this I not for him? It's... <laughs> It's hard for me to comment on this kind of thing because I wouldn't be doing this at all with this lineup. <laughs> okay, gotcha. It's, so this is a way of flexing down the one two. They don't have anybody that they're potentially going to pin here. And in fact, there's a number of tanks that are actually here to make sure that they can't do this very easily. One of your first indicators that this is a bad idea uh, from Pink side is Dark God Zim's right here. And if somebody is all the way down here and they're expendable, that's probably because the non-expendable tanks are, there are to back down on the other end. <laughs> right. And they're there to back them up. Right. And that's where you're going to find the 50B, the W100, these kinds of things that are going to ruin your day. Well, looks like Chief's finding his day of ruin right now. A thousand points of damage are going on to that 50B. Fluky taking some more damage as well. Sheep just barely missing a shot there, flying right by him on the railroad. He's decided to not let his two shots go. Start reloading immediately. Dark God's him. R251 slowly but surely whittling down the enemy tanks. Meanwhile, over in the north, Ald and Reaper are going up uh, to the northern camp here, but Rock that 5B is there to try to either sway them from not doing that or punish them for doing that. But he is now kind of going out and around, opening up that northern camp. The moment Reaper steps on it, though, there, a ping is going to be knowing something's going on here. Drock and Ald going head to head right now. 4 to 14 damage in that IS4. 900, 500 going there onto Drock and that 5B. Reaper coming up the side though. He is one more shot from going down. All brought 426 points of damage. Meanwhile, 817 there going onto Mufasa. Tigers take him down. And we have a battle now, ladies and gentlemen, sprawled out across the entire map of Himmelsdorf. And it looks like Eclipse is going to be the one coming out on top as Fluky goes down. 
Druk might be falling here. He takes a shot on the Reaper, who is doing a great job bouncing back and forth there. 496, and once all goes up, he's going to take Druk. Meanwhile, Dark God taking down Sheep. Only four members for Ping remain against the f six of Eclipse. Rome taking down Taunt there. Tigers takes down Shimbo, and it looks like this is all over as Master of People takes down Taunt. Ping 999, only having two members up. Alt and Reaper. Reaper with just 19 points of HP. Alt sitting at 1100. Meanwhile, everyone Eclipse very healthy indeed. Two minutes on the clock. They're going to try to put some cap pressure on. They're going to try to see if they can cap it out before Eclipse can get to them. But it doesn't look like they're going to be quick enough as T1 Diabetic almost loaded, almost ready. He's going to have a sweet shot at all there in that E100. He spots him. Tigers from the side. One shot goes into the 1390. Takes him down. The shot from T1 Diabetic. Actually missing one. The second one does it. And Tigers getting a double kill there at the end. Picking up a third victory. Now tying it up against Ping 999 here on Himmelsdorf for a second match of the night. David, this is something we talked about. We saw 07 do it against Aquatic yet, uh, Tuesday. Looks like uh, Ping might be, or uh, the caller might be, ever, caller wanted Eclipse. Goodness gracious. Might be able to do it against the enemy's Ping tonight. Uh, now, looking at what Ping was trying to do there, they sent the 1390 and Ald uh, up to the north to try to either take down the 5B uh, and, and maybe would they, do you think that even a possibility of taking that northern cap if the fight was going on in the west if it took longer? 45 seconds on the I clock. I think that was their goal. Okay. And, and, I, and it's, uh, it's good that you noticed at all. I mean, it's not an obvious thing. It's not, it's not an insult there. Thanks. The IS-4 <laughs> versus 215B, I'd rather be in the 215B personally, but perhaps Ping thought that they could win that with a little bit of the help from the Tier 8 in that situation. So if they were able to take that out and put a double cap pressure there, it would have put Eclipse in a very uncomfortable position that Eclipse would have then had to try and reason out. But they did it a little bit of Wombo. They did it uh, in a way where Eclipse was basically just to able to have both fights and right. win both fights right. and not really care. So uh, even though those two did get away after, I guess you could say they won the Northeast. They didn't quite win it. Okay. Um, so it's not a terrible plan. Just didn't quite, wasn't executed beautifully. Right. And the, the, the difference between that being a, an okay plan that didn't work to a fantastic plan that worked, oh my is entirely gosh. execution and timing. All right. Well, uh, anything? probably your tank selection. Yes, yeah, so let's go to stats. Okay, okay, let's go. So, Master Pupil with 3,600, Tigers with 3,400, T1 Diabetic with 2,700, Conky with 22,000, or 2,200, oh and geez. Aldebron with 2,000, <laughs> Tontinox with 1,400. That's really all you need to cover. Yeah. Reaper. Reaper did 1239 with his 1390. Oh, fantastic job in there. Now, now looking at Eclipse, where we've seen them from, possibly going on tilt for a moment, now coming back here. Yep. If you were in the situation, you've tied it up, is this like we're like, okay, guys, like we did it. Like we, we can now move forward. Is there still that potential tilt, or is tilt gone at this point? Usually tilt is gone, and you have hype at this point. Cool. You've eliminated it. And you can go back to it's that like whole depressive state of this never should have happened kind right. of thing after the battle. But in the meantime, now it's kind of a just a test testosterone rage where you're trying, <laughs> you know, it, you, you feel like you feel like they were insulting you. The right. Enemy team. Yeah. I, I how dare describe, they? Right. Yeah. How dare they try? Yeah. Beat us. You know who I am? Well, let's yeah, see if Eclipse can show them who they are or will Ping be able to pick up a victory now on the defense and then just need one more down the night. It's all tied up three to three. Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for our tanks. Ping stole my wins. <laughs> Eclipse with a 113 to a 50B and E100, two two one fives and IS7 and an RU251. Ping with a 50B, two two one fives and IS7, an object 260, an STI and an E50. Eclipse now on offense again, and they are looking to win both of these and close it all out. But Ping, even though the momentum has started to swing back against them, things are even in Ping can likely do the same. Both teams defending successfully one time would push us into a tiebreaker on steps. Steps, that's right. I but one map. game at a time, ladies and gentlemen, because anything can happen so far as both teams have swung wildly up and down in their overall performance level. And I think they're true, proving to be a lot more equally matched than I expected. All right, we were kind of talking about, you know, in, in the premium show, Dark God Zim. Taking a little bit of damage there. And then RU251 going for uh, that scout there. He did find an IS7, so he did scout something correctly. Seven minutes, two seconds, a minute already gone by. And Eclipse, again, biasing, putting a lot of members on the hill. Yes. A lot of members on the hill is uh, almost an understatement. Or, well, they were coming this way. 
They're like, an understatement, super David. Excited bye. For this. <laughs> All right, bye, guys. Bye. See you later. See ya. Just leave. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> I was really expecting Make you put back. that many tier two. Okay, now Rome's coming back. Make up your mind, boys. Mm. I was really expecting you to put that many tier tens up here to just barrel down the zero and get this done with, with kind of a um, testosterone gusto. Yeah, I, I guess I guess that's one way to put it. <laughs> kind of a fervor that would have put uh, Ping back on their heels and made the next match or next next game More easier to win. Sure. But I guess that is not what Eclipse is doing here. They deposited one tier 10 there. They're probably going to rotate the rest of the eight as it makes very little sense to separate that far. However, if they were to take the rest of their team and put them over, if they were to do kind of what uh, Peng did last time, except with an E100 and an RU251, that could definitely, <laughs> that, that little combo could definitely beat whatever was left as a skeleton force for defensive pings. Huh. 100 is something mean to tangle with. But either yeah, way, that's so all sweet. irrelevant as Eclipse is going to take the direct approach and just put as many tanks as they can into the northeast and create a fight and try and win that fight. We'll see if that happens. Meanwhile, I love what Reaper was doing here in that IS-7. He's just a, a house really away from his last position where he got punished there uh, from the rubble. And he just poked out for a second, took another shot for 400 points of damage. The poor guy just not catching a break right now. Shots being fired up on top of the hill, but it is just Rome now who remains up there for Eclipse. T1 Diabetic in that 113 now pushing forward here. Going to start applying that cap pressure. Going to alert now to ping what they are doing. So we should be seeing now, if you guys watch the minimap, the blues start moving either to right to the north, maybe going for a flank. It looks like they're sending their E50 straight across the K-line. Possibly are trying to find stalling out Eclipse as long as possible to let that tank come back in and join the fight now. Taunt taking some shots there on the Rome. And the E100 up on top. T1 Diabetic there. A nice shot there through the window in that 260. 200 points of damage there from Rome on top of the hill. 75 seconds on the clock. A second member joined just for a second. There it is, dropping into 35 seconds. Master people there coming around. Another shot from Ta on to Rome. They're missing. And the cat pressure going slower and slower. I mean, lower and lower, not slower and slower. All of their mo moving kind of back and forth, not really helping out yet. Trying to find a shot there on any member of Eclipse's can. Probably trying to punish Master Pupil there. His shot just barely missing. And meanwhile, we've got a fight now going over in the courtyard. Tigers in that 50B now on the run. Shimbo coming in the corner, lining up a shot, takes the shot for 386 points of damage there. And a little bit of a 10 seconds on the clock. Eclipse there putting a lot of cap pressure. It's up going to be Ping to get the reset. There it is. They send their members over. All going on either the suicide mission to get the reset or not, but he does successfully stall out Eclipse there. All taking 886 points of damage there. One more shot, and he's been going down. Meanwhile, the courtyard fight still underway, going back and forth. Who's going to come out on top? Eclipse having done so much more damage than Reaper taking down Tigers. The 50B falling for Eclipse. A nice pick up there for Ping, but Kaki and Master People, a double kill, take it down Sheep and Shimbo there for Ping. Five members on Ping against the six for Eclipse, but Drunk is getting so low. Mufasa trying to even this one out. A 5v5 now, three minutes and 25 seconds on the clock, and the battle, ladies and gentlemen, is not over. Dark Odds him coming around the RE2 5 to try to help out any way that he can. A shot there into Reaper. Conky looking right at that IS-7, trying to end him out. The shot, they're missing, though, going right over the top of him. An unfortunate turn of events there for Eclipse. They are still, though, on top, but Flugi taking down Conky means that they're trying to claw their way back here. T1 Diabetic responds, getting a little bit of revenge. And Mufasa with another kill against Dark Gods in that RU2 by one fall in there. Two minutes and 50 seconds on the clock. Reaper there going down for Ping 999. Now Ping turned their attention to T1 Diabetic. The shot from the E100 right in the back of Mufasa. T1 Diabetic does take down all before he goes down himself. Uh oh, two shots there going into the 113. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication there coming out for Ping. Now it is a two on two with two minutes and 35 seconds on the clock. A 5B against an E100 who takes down Mufasa almost instantly there. And now it is just Master Pupil. I mean, just taunt on Ping against Master Pupil and Rome. A 260, who is Clear. on reload? Should be oh, good. come on. He's not even loaded yet. <laughs> 401 Sorry. points of damage, there it is. And Rome leaves his opponent first. Picks that one up. Eclipse now finally taking the lead for the first time of the night, up four to three against Ping 999. And this is what we were talking about. This is kind of the, the situation where you want to be in as Eclipse. You just got, you, you were down, you're, you've won now every single one. They've won four in a row. And if they can pick this one up, this is going to be a five in a row victory for them. A huge morale boost, obviously, for the team. And they're showing that they could be coming back here 
looking at the kind of style of ping or uh, how they were set up across the map and what Eclipse is trying to do, putting those members up on top of the hill, you're talking about they just qu they didn't quite commit. They put all those you know tier tens. They were pushing up, and then they decided to back off, and they pushed up, and then they split off on the side. What was the reasoning behind that? Was that just the communication? So uh, they're bringing all those tanks in force, so in the event that they encounter anybody on the zero line, they will win that fight. Then they pull them away to put more force in the eight line for the same reason. They got gotcha. the E100 up there for a flank because on the zero line from that elevated position, the E100 is a very dangerous tank. As we saw. It fired down, it's hard to penetrate when it's at an elevation or, or lower than you, or if it's in a different funky angle. Weird, if right. you're dead on with it, it's easier. And that's the, the face. weird thing with it. As soon as it starts turning, it gets harder to penetrate. So a lot of other tanks weird. get easier to penetrate. This one gets harder. Huh. Uh, we do have enough time. Let's go to stats. So that was just big firefight that mostly ping one, but we'll talk about that here in a second. Mm -hmm. Master Pupil, 4526. Robe with 3069. Both of them pretty much carrying quite a bit there. Conky got ended up, or ended up uh, being used as armor against his own team. That didn't work out. Tigers got in one clip, all of which for damage before he went down. Uh, draw cab T1 diabetic. Now he he had a very strange position. He was basically trying to hold by himself against a number, mostly by himself, slightly supported, but against a, an overwhelming force. So okay. he did a good job there. Mufasa for ping with nearly 3,000 fluke yeah, and 2,700. Right. So, uh, ping shot mainly selection. Won that fight. Yes, who who they were firing at? Who who Eclipse was firing at? Changed a couple of different times. Their, huh. their shot selection was a little weird. Okay. Their tank positioning was a little strange. Uh, there was a moment there where Rome started turning his gun towards a, a tank that was like less than 100 hit points. Gotcha. To fire an E100 at that at all Don't. is a gigantic waste. So, you know, if you want to make sure you secure the kill, you can drive that way with his tank because a slight tap with it will kill it from ram damage <laughs> and make sure to focus his gun the other direction. While Rome did a great job there near the end, so keeping that misplayed. momentum and going forward, because if he had stopped, Ping might have brought it out. Really? Him driving that, that whole close. push forward. Yeah. Uh, him driving that whole push forward was a, was a big play there. Uh, him and Master Pupil as well uh, in the 215B. But overall, just a lot of little things, and this is what separates a great team from an mm. amazing team. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's see if Eclipse can be that great team and win five in a row against Ping, or can Ping bring it back and tie it up? Let's get right into it and take a look at what we've got for the tanks. An Eclipse with a 50B, a 2215s, two IS-7s, a W100, and an RU251. Ping with a 50B, a 2215s, two IS-4s, an IS-7, and an AMX-1390. So as a good example, we're just kind of curious as to what good shot selection looks like, what good teamwork looks like. Uh, a team that, that goes so far with it that sometimes they don't even need to share hit points because their positions are so well tuned to begin with is Noble right now. Hmm. So Noble sometimes takes a less strategic approach in order to create a fight where their small team tactics will simply Overcome. win the battle for them. Wow. Okay. Basically, if they had gotten in that situation against either Ping or Eclipse, they would have won hmm. just based on how they played their tanks together and individually. Gotcha. Wow. And that was that was where I was seeing kind of Eclipse. Want that, that crazy chaos fight. Yes, uh, and that's where I was seeing Eclipse falter uh, a little bit more than I, I would consider acceptable in that kind of situation. But either way, they dug it out by the end. Great strategic movements, and they are now four to three, and they're on defense. So one away from bringing it all home, or paying one away from tying it back up and taking it to steps. All right, here. Let's see who is going to come out again. It looks like a very similar lineup from Eclipse. The last time they were on defense. Waffle E100 in the same position as last time. Let's see if uh, Ping can get enough information to see this and have a correct, proper response. Or if they'll walk into the same sort of trap. So they did just two matches or two battles ago. Six minutes and 27 seconds on the clock. Not a lot of action kicking off so far. Taunt and that I7 is spotted out. Looks like possibly by Drock there. Kind of going back and forth, rocking between those windows just to try to get any sort of spotting that he can. An I7 just remaining for Eclipse in that A5 position, making sure the north is covered. Two members up on top of the hill there for Ping. Uh, the last time this happened, you know, Ping went over and they tried to do you know the, the two in the the two over in the north and win the rest in the west. Or in the win the rest in the west. It didn't work out for him. Uh, now they are sending a tank very aggressively uh, in that B0 position, being spotted out there by the I7, which is going to cause Eclipse to now rotate around. It looks like a correct rotation. Mufasa taking 437 points of damage there as he moves across there. Rome, though, getting lit up 902 from Shimbo and Fluky. You've got to be careful there. 
Uh, he's just probably just going to wait now to cross at all. He doesn't really have to. Uh, Shimbo and Fluki now just sitting there going back and forth. He's to make sure that they do not get across without taking damage. We got the 5B coming on the way through. Drop. Sim starting to chase down Reaper in the 1390. Sim has Scout been chasing battle. him for like 20 seconds now, just looking for that opportunity to have a head-to-head, <laughs> -head, which is incredibly gutsy by Zim because that is not a fight. He should theoretically want. win <laughs> super reliably, but he doesn't care. Yeah, he, he clearly has uh, the confidence that he will win that fight probably by com combining a ram or something like that, which is a nice little way to see that testosterone man. tanks. But Either way, he's buying the room for Tigers to get this flank as they desperately need to get some sort of motion here. Tigers trying not to open himself up to Tontanakis as he crosses this line. That will be tricky. Tigers taking 490 in the process. And here's why. Right here. Tontanakis hauled down on the eight line. The only thing you could do is slip by this. You're not going to shoot it and penetrate it reliably. It's the same thing as we saw in the very beginning of the match, unless you sit there and just spam it with HE into the roof. You're not going to do any reliable damage gotcha, to it. Gotcha. you got to close the distance and kill it. And in the 8-line, that's an easy thing to do, provided you have backup in the right tanks and the right overall strategy to help you get to that position. But either way, that's an entirely different topic. And Sheep trying to make that D9 position work for a very long time. And he's now opened himself up to <laughs> Dark God Sim. <laughs> Dark God Sim is a Look at him. He he's pulling care. everyone. He doesn't care. He's a honey badger, man. Exactly. Dark God Sim. He's like, oh, tier 10, four shots. I don't care. I got this. <laughs> Dark God Sim just takes what it Yellow. wants. 28 oh, seconds, though. This, the, he's, he's overplaying his hand right now, though. Sheep gets back up here. It's it's no good. Well, there's 23 seconds, though, on the clock. Ping putting a lot of pressure for this northern cap. It's going to cause Eclipse to come around the corner with Kagi and Master Pupil. Fluki doing his best to try to stop that. The shot they're going through. Master People picks up Fluki. And now Mufasa going through. Looks like Shibbo stepped on the cap just for a second. 612, 1200 points of damage there. There's the waffle coming in strong. Ladies and gentlemen, 2300 points. Finally finishing it off by himself. Shimbo, the eyes for going down. But now he is in a bit of a predicament. T1 Diabetic is on a reload. And he should be going down near Reaper that 1390. Might be able to finish him off just himself. 1600 points of damage. He has one more shot. Will it be enough? Let's no 271. I don't know if that 1390 is gonna have enough to do ram. Probably take more damage himself. Meanwhile, Tigers taking out Taunt and Eclipse. Looks like they're gonna pick up this victory. Three tanks remain. Dark God Sim. <laughs> Dark God Sim's gonna get him. Oh He's my got gosh. Sheep dead to rights oh and Sheep is starting gosh. to clip. Dark God Sim coming around. He knows exactly where he is. He sees the moment and he has played this scout perfectly, <laughs> Charlie, in this situation <laughs> until right then. No breaks. No break, Sim. You had him, oh, and you let him get away. That could have been the highlight right there. He's just too worried. He's too worried in a situation. He played it he so aggressively the whole situation. time, and that's the time that he decides to worry. Uh, for for a moment, it, it was some of the best scouting I've seen in a long time. Just on the edge of too aggressive and and conservative enough, and that's uh, you have to play it fast and loose balance. like that. Sure. And in that situation, there was no risk to him dying too cheap, and he should have just gone for it. It's it's either. <laughs> It's either glory or death. Like, <laughs> yeah. just, just go for you've got, it. You've got six members to back you up. Like, no worries. Either way, it would have been it would have been great. Now, Sheep trying to rotate up the eight line. There's nothing he can do here. No. Raper in the 1390, there's nothing he can do here either. Both of these guys essentially just creating their, their final death march here before Eclipse brings this match back Five from a 3-0 deficit Woo. on a five-win streak. To win it all. Not an easy thing to do indeed. Congratulations to Eclipse for being able to pick this one up. In a minute and 40 seconds on the clock. Drop! Taking down Reaper. What a beautiful fire explosion. That is the way to go down here. Sheep below half health there. Just 750 remain there on that 50B. He's going to go for that solo cap pressure in the north. He doesn't even technically have enough time for that. He's going to drive on through. Whoa! Oh, double rip. shot! Drunken Master Pupil! Pick him up there, and that is going to be Eclipse with a 5, now 3 victory against Ping, which seemed to start out so bad. The tilt looked like it was so real. Composed themselves, tying it up, and finding finally those victories there. David, before we kind of close out the second match, any of the highlights you just saw from that last final battle? 
you know, there's so much to really discuss overall. I'm just going to say that it was a, a nice test for Eclipse to get mm. challenged like that, to sure. experience those kind of stresses and to come through and win it in the end. And a great, uh, a large amount of progress from Peng to even be able to bring them that kind of challenge to begin with. As previously, and I don't mean to be overly harsh here, as previously, they just weren't on the same level as Eclipse. So mm. already getting a lot of progress, and I hope they're happy with that. And they just keep their nose to the grindstone and keep improving what they're doing. And by the end of the season, I think they'll definitely have it together. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that closes out our second match of the night. Before we go to break, I just want to let you guys know that Simple Tankers won against Aquatic M6. He's 5-3. to three. Just for you guys' F uh, from information. Is that correct? Am I wrong? No, that's that's correct, but I was going to... We have oh. to go to stats. And we, oh, let's go to stats, apparently. To. Let's go to stats. Draw cab, 41.54. Master pupil, 35.45. Gotcha. T1 Diabetic, <laughs> 2,500 even. Rome, 23.52. There's just so much HP in this fight that everybody was able to farm a huge amount. But both those 215Bs getting just incredible amounts of damage in. All right. There you go. Have it there for those fantasy points. Ladies and gentlemen, match number two is done. Match number three, Dingin' A versus Simp is coming right up.